Now, for those who are watching on Zoom, I know the slight corner of the screen may be distracting for some of you. So if that is the case, just do this, you know, and don't watch that side of the screen. Just kidding. Uh, we have no way. Uh, actually, Alex is trying to do a make a way. Thank you, Alex. Um, let's go. The journey from the uh, from the manger to the cross. That was uh, my message from uh, for for this day. And the word or the idea was the journey. The fact that Christmas is not a unique event that's this that is disjunct or separate from the rest of the story of the gospel. And the more I prepare for this message, the more I thought about the gospel and the essence of the gospel. But what term is it more present in our ears this uh, season as we listen in, uh, you know, radios, TVs, whatever? Probably you know that the most used and somehow abused term is Christmas spirit. Am I right? More on that on Christmas Eve. That's our devotion for Christmas Eve. Christmas spirit, really. And that's on Thursday. But, you know, words like joy, love, peace, you know, words like gifts or laughter or food and family or accepting, forgiving, kindness, you know, all those are good things. But to be honest, Christmas is so much more than just that. I would say, as I said before, this is all about a journey. And if you probably, if you read the book or saw the movie, it does remind me a lot about that journey from the Shire Mordor in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's, it's a journey that is difficult, but it ends with redemption for all. The Christmas story is about the journey from the manger, like I said, to the cross. You see, Christmas by itself does not mean that much without the cross. But Christmas plus the cross means everything. We like to take Christmas just by itself because, you know, it's all nice gifts, especially, or the atmosphere of acceptance, love, family coming over, although some people might not want to do that. You know, I heard that introverts are praying especially hard for the COVID to end so that people can actually move away from homes and not be so much at home on their, you know, with them. That's half a joke. Anyway, the idea of a baby, Jesus or God as the baby that you can, you know, cuddle and, you know, just what was what? What's the, what can we call this? Cuddle? Yeah. Uh, you know, and just uh, give love to and receive love. You know, the, I miss, honestly, Emma, to be honest, when she was, uh, you know, six months old. And she would fall asleep on my, on my chest when I was reading my paper and stuff. And I miss those days. It's nice. You know, we all enjoy that. In Romania, back in the 90s and 2000s, the most prolific missionary endeavor in Romania was, the working, was working with kids, with orphans you know, or with hospital, hospitalized kids, you know, because it's so easy to go and show love to a baby. But like Dave just prayed, it's so much more than this, you know. Christmas plus the cross mean, it means everything. And it means especially peace. And I say peace with peace with God, peace with God the Father through the death of his son. That kind of peace that the angels sang about. Remember in one of, the, I think it's Luke, uh, in Luke, we see that angels come and uh, they sing about the peace. But that peace was not actually fulfilled or achieved until the cross. That peace, maybe it was some peace on that evening, on that night, if it was an evening or a night. But the full peace with God was achieved at the cross. And that peace is still available today, even in 2020, which is about to end, thank God. Although, you never know, 2021, maybe. I'm not saying nothing. Happy New Year. We'll take, uh, we'll take in three steps. First is journey decided. You see, this journey was decided from a long time ago by God the Father because we needed salvation. From Genesis 3, if you know those verses in Genesis 3 that say, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between the, your offspring and her offspring. That's the message uh, talking between God and the snake, the serpent. And God says, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Some call this the proto-gospel, the beginning of the gospel, the promise of someone, a child of a woman that will come and restore us. So the journey was not decided on Christmas Eve. It was in God's plan from the from day when we needed salvation, from the day we fall, we fell into sin. 
Or as Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 20, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world. Jesus was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. Or the Isaiah prophecies, which we'll read uh, a lot of on, on Christmas Eve, you know, Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, all, and, and others, all those beautiful messages about Christ. I'm just going to read one, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, God meet uns, God with us. That's the message. Christ was foretold by the prophets because we needed salvation. The journey was decided way before Christmas and was based on our need. And someday I'm going to work on this message. I have it in mind for like 10 years now. I haven't never gotten to put it down on paper. Where is the child? Where is that child? Since then, Genesis 3, this question kind of seeps into the, into the scriptures in the Old Testament about where is that child? What is the common um, feature or common thing between all the three wives, the patriarchs, or matriarchs, we call them, I guess? What's the common feature, the common thing that all three share? Sarah, Rebecca, and I'm missing one. First one. Okay. Clearly, I have not slept well enough. Sarah, Abraham, and Sarah, Jake. Okay, I'm never going to do that. Okay, what was common to all three of them? Is that, I'm going to cut that on the video, okay? I'm going to just cut that from, the, from YouTube, okay? Uh, they're all barren. You know, God promised Abraham that there, a child will be born to him and his uh, descendants, but all three matriarchs were barren, and God worked the impossible. But the question was there, where is that child? If you go to the book of, of Ruth, you, know, you, you watch Naomi going from having uh, sons to having nothing to holding a baby again at the end of the book you know the same question the same same ah, blessing no so two kids no kids again arms full you know this question about where's that child or if you want the culture of the jews the curse of childlessness it was not because you know you're missing on on having children although that is so bad if you want children it was the idea that Messiah could not come through you. You miss out on that chance. Maybe I'm the one. You know, every pregnant young lady in Israel in those days was asking, was questioning, am I going to be the one that the prophet spoke about? I guess, maybe not everybody. I, I'm exaggerating here. I guess, you know, I'm hoping everybody was Christ-minded or God-minded, but probably not everybody. But that was the idea. The need of a child and the promise of a child. The one whom Simeon in first Luke, sorry, in Luke chapter one, chapter two, actually, sorry, chapter two, twenty-five, is called the consolation of Israel. Simeon, the old man, full of the spirit, says in Luke two twenty-five, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And once he held that baby in his arms, he says these amazing words. Luke twenty, Luke two twenty-nine and on. It's not on the screen. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory and for glory to your people Israel. When he beheld that child, he said, I have enough. And actually, I think there's a book with those words written somewhere. Pastor Joe was mentioning it. So the journey was decided way before based on our need for salvation. But the journey then started, and we call that incarnation. Fancy word, sorry about that, but it's a great word, incarnation. Like in John 1, 14, that says, and the word became flesh, and he dwelt amongst us. That is the incarnation. Or if you want, 1 Peter 2, sorry, 1, 20, again, that we read before, he was made manifest. In the last times for the sake of us. And you know, I'm not going to go through the story, the looking story, the, sorry, the story in Luke or the story in Matthew. Because you all probably know those stories. We sing them so much and we hear them so much, you know, about Mary and Elizabeth, her cousin. 
about the baby boy that was uh, uh, spoken about by the angel, and about how the baby of Elizabeth jumped even in the womb when he was in the presence of the, of the Savior, even, although they're both babies and both in the womb at that time. You know, if you speak about versus pro-life, that's one of, one of the most strong, uh, the stronger per versus pro-life is uh, the uh, interaction between the unborn babies of Mary and Elizabeth. But that's a whole different story. And then the shepherds. And then, you know, have them on the field uh, doing whatever the shepherds do on the field at night. I guess sleeping probably. Who knows? Uh, and then the angels coming and the singing. And then the shepherds walk into the, the baby born. You know the story. I don't have to go through all that. I won't read that now. And then, of course, the magi, or what are we call the wise men from, from the east with the gifts they brought. All the stories of Christmas, you know, the journey started. And the aim of this journey is, or was actually, the cross. He was not born to stay a baby. He was not born to just be all day, all, you know, forever in the manger. He was born with a mission. He came with a purpose. Christ is born for the cross. And probably no other verses uh, say this better than Philippians 2, from 5 to 8. Have this mind amongst yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. That was the purpose of the incarnation. God came to this earth to die for us. Of course, there are other benefits. He taught us. He gave us the example of his life. You know, we, we have so much of what God has left us through Jesus, through his ministry on this earth. You know, so many things, so many lives changed and touched. His, his sermons, his words, his teaching. And like I said, his example. But those are, if you want, the byproduct of the main mission, which is to come and redeem us by his death. Christmas without cross doesn't mean that much. And of course, the journey has its peak, its culmination, its climax, which is the cross. I'm going to read Colossians 2, 13 to 15. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, you, God, made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. We can spend hours or even years about talking about the cross. I'm just saying this now. That was his aim, his purpose, his ministry, was to come and bring redemption and hope for us. Christmas means so much because it's like the foretaste of what is to come, which is us with God at peace again. But that comes only through suffering on the cross. But it doesn't end there. There's so much more. The resurrection. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3. It's, you know, it's a great verse, you know, kind of like introduction. People kind of skim over it because it's right in the beginning. But it's a great verse. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3. Blessed be God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. We are born again through a living hope. But how? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection. We'll speak about this on the first Sunday of 2021. I think January 3. I could be wrong, but around there sometimes, somewhere. The resurrection. The very first that said, I'll be back. And he was. You know, or if you quote uh, the other guy from the 40s, I shall return. The uh, five-star general of the U.S. He did return. Sorry, but he first has to go. <laughs> he, he came back. You know, he, he came here because we needed to be the first fruits of this ministry of resurrection. 
He came back to life because death could not hold him. He trampled death by death. This could be also an Easter message, almost like an Easter message, because we think of Christ trampling death by death and giving life to those in the graves, to us. The journey at its peak has the cross, but there is more. The resurrection and then the ascension. We don't really celebrate ascension in Canada. It's a big celebration in Romania, in the Orthodox Church, and probably in the Catholic too. But the ascension, why do people celebrate the ascension of Christ? Because he went up to the Father and took his right, right place by the, at, the, at the right of the Father, God the Father. Why? To continue to intercede and to minister for us. First Timothy 2.5. For there is one God and there is one mediator or intercessor between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. Or Hebrews 4.14, Christ went to heaven back. Christ ascended to heaven as we see in Acts chapter 1 because his ministry continued for us. It says, the author of Hebrews say, says, writes, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the, through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, Let's hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. This always touches my heart. I'm going to continue. Our high priest, Jesus Christ, today has sympathy for my weaknesses. Have you ever felt weak recently, like today or last week? Moments of failure, maybe? Moments where we thought, messed up we've done it again in those moments we feel that god has nothing but anger towards us because that's what humans usually react you know you see a mistake there's anger human frustration whatever you want to call it. irritation is is what somebody called in a nice article about the sin of irritability we have that sometimes we assume that god is the same but he's not he says that in our weaknesses he is able to sympathize with us. One in who, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. And what's the conclusion of this chapter, fourth of Hebrews? Let us then draw, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to God, to his throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. His ministry was decided way before Christmas. The ministry began, the journey began at Christmas with one big or great destination, the cross. And the cross was the culmination of this journey, but not the end of it. Because then was the resurrection and the ascension. And lo and behold, what we call the second advent. Advent is a Latin word for coming. It's adopted in English, and we call it Advent. You know, we have the Advent week, month, or whatever in, in, in December. But the word itself means coming, the coming. And there is something we call the second Advent, the second coming of Christ, when he will come back for his church. And he will come back as a lion, the lion of Judah. If you doubt me, read Revelation 19, verse 11 and on, about the Christ who is no longer the lamb, but now is the lion. Amazing. So if you want, this is actually what we, we as in, you know, those who actually have a, uh, you know, sliver of, of theology, <laughs> a veneer of theology, we call the kerygma, which is a Greek word for proclamation. Throughout the word, throughout the book of Acts, which by the way is our 2022 plan, I'm, I'm praying for, you know, I actually plan for 2022, can you believe that? I actually plan to take a course uh, on the book of Acts, uh, so I can prep for 2022, you know, think about advanced planning. Anyway, so this word kerygma means proclamation and comes in all the sermons and proclamations in the book of Acts. It's got five things. If you think about the gospel, five simple elements. Christ was foretold by the prophets. Christ was born of a virgin. Christ suffered and died on the cross. Christ came to life on the third day and Christ will come again to judge as a king. That's the proclamation of the gospel. And Christmas is part of it. Not separated, but part of the kerygma. Part of the proclamation of the gospel. 
of the victory of God over sin and death through the cross of Christ. So this journey, how can you look beyond the manger and find something for my heart, for our hearts today? First, three things. And it's all about thankfulness. Be thankful for the incarnation, for the Word chose to come and become flesh. Because that means hope. Be thankful for the, for the choice, for His choice to come here. And be thankful also for His example. Make, we make that usually the main message. Be like Christ, you know, WWJD and stuff like that. Although the main message is He died for my sins. But we are thankful for His choice and His example and His teachings. But we, like I said, we are thankful for, the, for because in the incarnation, we have received hope. Something is happening. God cares. God did not forget. God has a plan so I can be back at peace with my Maker. Two, be thankful for the cross because that means redemption. That means redemption, forgiveness, and with all those, with all, all two, restoration. Redemption, forgiveness, and restoration. And lastly, be thankful for the resurrection. And I have this quote, which is from a, a um, cell phone company in Romania. The future looks good. The future does look good. I'm sure maybe there's a commercial here too. I don't know, it was back in Europe. The future looks good. Both the immediate future here on this earth, because Romans 8, 11 says this, the Spirit of God who, was, who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So we are indwelt by His Spirit, empowered by His Spirit, sanctified by His Spirit, enabled to live a life that pleases God at peace with Him. The future looks good. And then the more distant future when we will be with Him again because of all that He has done for us. I am thankful this Christmas. As I open gifts and eat good food, you know, that's by faith. Good food. Thank you, Anna, for what you will cook, we'll cook together on Christmas, before Christmas. I want to go back home and not sleep in the shed because we don't have a shed. Anyway, I'm thankful this Christmas that we open up gifts and, you know, unwrap, uh, open up gifts and eat food, not the other way around. And why? Because of the hope I have through his incarnation, the joy I have in his redemption, and the... the my heart is touched when I think about the future. The future looks good. And all became visible for us at Christmas through his journey. He finished his for you and me. He opened up a way back for us into fellowship with God, a path beyond the separation of sin, the sin that brought us apart from the Father. You know what? He won't force us actually to walk on this path. He opened up a gate or a way for us. And he's inviting us to walk with him or follow him, actually. But he will never force anyone to go and follow him. If anything separates you from God today, maybe it's sin. Maybe it's a wound or a scar, a memory of a wound. Maybe it's fear, bad choices, anger. So many things may easily separate us from God. I'm calling all of us to look back at the manger and look at the cross and come home. Christmas is about coming home, but not to your mom and dad, although we do that sometimes. But it's coming, go, coming home to God. His journey ended when he ascended. My journey began when I came home to my father. This Christmas, I pray that all you all will come home to your father. His arms are open wide for each and every one of us. Let's pray.